6.34 p.m. Okay. Um, can I make an addition to tonight's consent agenda, please? Yes. Yes. The Finance Committee would like to put forward on the consent agenda um, approval to liquidate the Ernest Rich Fund, which had existed in the Roxbury School District in the past, to be liquidated and incorporated any residual re revenue into the MERPS General Fund. So this is an, uh, essentially an accounting cleaning up process that Grant's been working on well, since the merger, and it was it actually very clear before the merger. So we have finally got some clarification on this, and we'd like to wrap it up for Grant. Okay. Does anyone want to discuss this? Uh, just one other point is this: <coughs> what this will essentially do is take twelve thousand dollars that was um, being uh, accounted for in a pretty labor-intensive fashion and bring it into the district, the district's general fund. Okay. Well, we skipped an agenda item, but I'd like to pull the policy monitoring from the consent agenda. Uh, yeah, we're not a consent agenda. Okay, no. that's what I... Um, <laughs> okay, we're also going to add uh, to the regular agenda um, a discussion about a possible lawsuit regarding the company Jewel that um, our district lawyer uh, brought to us. Um, so I'll make those two additions, adding the Ernest Rich uh, fund uh, cleanup to the consent agenda, and uh, why, don't we, why don't we do the dual one for the learning focus? Is that okay? Yep. Um, uh, is there, how, is it, would it be possible to put this fund into the um, regular agenda? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so do we need a motion to put th this in the regular agenda? I don't think so. I think as long as it happens at the very beginning. As long as it happens at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Before we do anything. Because yeah. yeah. Ryan's read Robert's Rules all 600. <laughs> <laughs> so I think page 272. Um, uh, now to Tina's point, uh, public comment. Um, seeing none, we will move to the consent agenda, which no longer has the earnest rich proposal on it. So never had it. Never had it. Uh, well, I think it had it for like half a second. <laughs> it 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 no longer does. Okay. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> right. Do you need a motion to approve the consent agenda? Yes. So if, moved. It, uh, if you pull the oh policy yes, policy. you wanted to pull the policy. I'll move, since it wasn't seconded, I'll withdraw that and move to approve the consent agenda minus the policy monitoring report. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, so, uh, let's talk about the Ernest Rich Fund. Can we give it to the PIE group? Um, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I forget what PIE stands for now. But oh, parents. the Parents in Education, Partners in Education. Partners in Education group. Yes. I'm not sure how we could give district money to another organization. Oh, that's a good point. I guess because it was um, a gift rather than part of our, it didn't seem right to me to put it in the general fund if it's not. Revenue? It's from it, so it's it's um it was a gift in the 1990s. <coughs> um, it just seems like it would be cool if we could if because if you could put it in partners for education, then it could keep its name on it, and maybe if it were used for something, it could have the name associated with something fun that the community would appreciate. Yeah, like I said, I know Bridget grants. is right. It's a different organization. Since it's right. a donation, are, are you allowed to do that? I, I don't know. Th this is something that had already been uh, verified with the auditors. Um, it was the auditor's recommendation to put it in the general fund. Yeah, for how to clean it up because of the amount of time. Yeah, I was going to say, Grant wasn't able to find any records on what the money was donated for. Um, he had had conversations with previous um, business managers in both the old districts and there was really no, the money had never been used once it ended up in the district. Is it, it's still in the form of stock? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Well, there's, there are four checks as well, totaling $4,000. It's, it's held or in the district owned fund. Now, now, it, is now it is. Well, since the, how did it, when did it get there? It was With the merger. Way. With the merger it came. Right. It was in, it was it in was, the Roxbury It was in the Roxbury before. district before. It was in, it was in a publicly, public entity's bank account before the merger and it, and it still is. Yes. Well, it was held in stocks. In stocks. Oh, it was held in stocks. Okay. So Grant has done a lot the of original gift was to stocks. find he we could nobody had stock certificates for it or anything. So Grant had to request that, like had to get go through a rigmarole, but he couldn't request it at first because it was a new district. He's right. not Roxy. So it was. It's taken a lot of time <laughs> to get this straightened out. Uh, at a certain point, over twelve thousand dollars, the the labor costs. Um, start to really cut into the value of that money. Yes. Well, and without a donor intent, <clears throat> there's no memory of a donor intent that there's really no point in getting fancy. So. Something we could always do, too, is if we do vote to move this into the general fund and we could follow up with grant. Well, if we move it into the general fund, that's discretionary and we could do anything with it from there. So if we wanted... Right. If we did find it, that there, if you want to do some sleuthing in there, just reach <laughs> Right. I mean, if we ultimately found out who he was, we could and do something like. Are we are we owning stocks then? Is that some? I mean, that seems them. unusual for a school district. It is. It's I highly unusual. Right? <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is highly unusual. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. there like a seven hundred dollar transfer fee just yeah. to move it from the district yeah. that didn't yeah. exist? <laughs> Which is why probably our auditors just like get rid of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So to get rid of it, what exactly are we going to do with it? Put it in the general fund. Oh, okay. But are we going to liquidate it? Are we? Yeah, we're going to liquidate it. Right. Yeah, so we know that that's, that's not clear. <laughs> proposed actions liquidate the stock. Oh, there it is. Yeah. The last line. <laughs> <laughs> so then can I make yeah, a motion? We're working under a motion right now. Are we just having a general discussion? I think we're just having a general discussion. I, I move fine. that we. Um, Follow the, the uh, I move that we direct the administration to carry out the proposed actions for the Ernest Rich Fund. I I'll second that. that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, and you want to talk about the. Come on. Uh, I, I know. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. Rock's great. The. The monitoring report, the very last thing on the monitoring report, uh, says more guidance from the board is helpful regarding what data they would like to see for all of the subgroups listed within this policy, particularly yada, yada, yada. See that last number six on here? And so I thought maybe to Libby's benefit, we pull it and say, not that we have to do this this moment, but how will we do this? So my question there is how how do I gather that data around family? Like what data would you see? It listed these subgroups under data the board would like to see about our student and family comp family population. So um, one, how do I collect that data? I could just do surveys. So that's going to be very limited. Um, and when would you like to see it? And it's hard data to collect. <laughs> right. And, so, and it's private data. It could be private data to collect. Don't look at me. Uh -huh. I'm saying I didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, no, I just wanted to you get know, further I saw off. this come out today from Central Vermont New Directions about the at risk population and encouraging parents. Uh, kids from sixth grade to twelfth grade to take parents to take this survey. I'm wondering if there's some way that would get at some of the gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, identifying kids at risk. I'm wondering if we could get some sort of report out from that. From from the youth risk your risk behavior surveys? Mm -hmm. We I think we can't. That's not out yet. It's not out yet. No. Um, um, 
but yeah, when I, when that comes out, we plan we on fully that. analyzing that, and I will share that those results from the board. Does that not get to some of these? It gets to some there. of them. Mm -hmm. Things it doesn't get to is marital status, family mm -hmm. composition, um, that kind of thing. Well. When I go back up to the original, the last line says the board will receive reports that monitors data to this end. So, um, so the discrimination or discriminatory and equitable Right, so maybe that's. Um, we, we talked about this in the different drafts of this policy, the data piece. And I feel like we had some indication from the administration at some point that everything was something that could be brought forward. It was achievable. Um, I don't remember, we didn't get into specifics, did we, in those conversations when we were drafting this? I think it could. I mean, we could bring information from survey data. This percentage of our student body identifies this way um, and has this family composition. As to would it be identifying in some cases? It though? may very well yeah. be identifying, um, and we, I would end that, you know, if the answer is too small, I wouldn't state that to the board in any way, but I'd tell you that, yeah. right? Um, as far as how, I guess, I guess monitoring the policy makes me look at it a lot closer, right? And so how do I let the board know that we have or don't have equitable practices for groups of people that concern their marital status or family composition or that's harder to I think one it's hard to say. One thing we were looking for you you do have number five here that we're working on conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. But I would say incidents or complaints from students. Yeah, you know, one thing that um, that really moved a lot of people of a lot of people's awareness was the students of color bringing complaints of specific incidents that they were experiencing. Um, and the family composition thing, I, actually I added after hearing that um, a student who was... Um, What's your comment, Michelle? <laughs> a, student, a student who was adopted and who was of a different ethnicity from their parents uh, was upset about a class assignment where they had to write an essay about how resembling their parents affected their experience in life. And the student said, I can't write this essay. And the teacher said, yeah, you can. Go for it. So um, I doubt that was reported to anyone other than the student's friends. But You know any kind of incident like that that does come to the attention of our administrators if we can uh, see a decline over time in those incidents arising so the issue of um, reported discrimination that would be the data right in preference to who right. falls in that category maybe it doesn't matter if nobody is being discriminated I know that sounds a little strange, but if we had some accounting of reports. Incidents, yeah. Because I think, you know, we, te we have a tendency to think, oh, everybody's happy here, everybody's nice to each other, and then we hear from students that that's not the case, but, but it's... <sighs> Actually, I was thinking as you talked about it, maybe it wouldn't be bad if, it, if the incidents reported went up. If that Initially. was Initially. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm going to grapple yeah. with that a little bit more. Is that mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> I, I was just remembering that I think that's what we were talking about. Um, was student, you know, the student experience of feeling um, marginalized. Yeah. I have a question on it. I mean, yep. Number four under compliance, and it is correct, we have not addressed religion on our policy and on our data measures, and we've been asked to do so. So there is. 
I um, talked to a former school board member about the religion policy that the former district had that was not picked up by the new district. Um, there wasn't any institutional memory left on the board about the origin of that policy. So I think the policy committee just thought, well, there's no, this isn't a VVSBA policy. Like maybe this is just an out of date right. policy. So it wasn't in the and in the first tranche of things where we were doing all of the required sure. policies. Well, um, what, what but it turns out it was never a VSBA policy yeah. and it had been a very specific community effort to address religion. And it's a very, it's a very thoughtful, it's very detailed. I mean, it, it goes to the level of a procedure in some cases, I would say, but it was addressing scheduling, um, awareness of holidays, yeah. um, curriculum, how religious holidays are acknowledged in the classroom or not, um, music, um, uh, education around religion, the difference between teaching about religion and celebrating religious holidays. And so it's something that we could probably should, I actually think we should look at that policy again and think about whether we when I was didn't address the issue enough. <coughs> when I was policy. having conversations with the group who brought this to my attention, we looked at that policy together um, and came to, well, I don't want to speak for other people. However, it was my understanding in the conversation that um, I was saying I'm monitoring the equity, diversity, inclusion policy upcoming because it was very recent. And I said, I wonder if just um, adding religion to that policy suffices the need from this particular organization, and they said yes, it would, mm -hmm. instead of having the a, a, a separate policy. Because um, we got into lots of good conversations around um, when that policy was written, we had a different population of students. So which religions do we teach, and which don't we? And how do I get my teachers trained on all of the religions of the world, and how do I get them experts so they're not just talking about matzo balls um, and how you know like I was asking some questions around that kind of thing which is my reading of the original policy the religion policy w was asking our teachers to do so they were like those are all very good questions I think you just need to put in your equity policy <laughs> that was the final kind of conversation point but I don't also want to speak for them yeah and how would that look I mean I I'd, I'd, I'd just have to wonder yeah. 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 right, so what I understand is the the, you know, the big issue is kind of awareness, especially awareness of, like, this we have a, mm -hmm. our calendar and scheduling tends to revolve around primarily Christian holidays, and I think there's some awareness of Jewish holidays and very little awareness of, you know, Muslim, Hindu, even other major religious holidays, and virtually no awareness of minor religious occurrences. So, you know, when we schedule, you know, something on Yom Kippur, uh, that creates a problem for a lot of our families. Yep, we had those conversations. Jim has been involved with myself and Anna as we've pulled, we've made steps already to, to pull lists of all major holidays and make sure that everybody has those. So they're yeah. not scheduling field trips and they're not scheduling um, big track meets and things like that that happened this fall. We messed up this fall, right? So we're going to fix that through, through other means too. I'm not sure if policy is going to help. You know, like if we need to take that step or not. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but adding something to the equity policy might mm -hmm. might remind be appropriate. Even and when it, you're and doing it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it would remind you in monitoring that yes. that's something that's yeah. being monitored for. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think I whenever we have these discussions about religion and I talk with my wife about these, I can't help but think about two of my best friends in uh, high school um, practiced Ramadan um, and they wouldn't eat for a month during the days and all day long they were hungry and having to go to school and they were brothers one of them was the goalie on our soccer team and like 30 minutes before a match was going to begin he was eating for the first time all day and I, I, I just felt for him <laughs> but you know there there are a lot of different considerations. I don't know exactly how um, a school schedules around all of these different, um, these different. Um, I mean, and, and it practically can't make everything stop, but I think an you know, awareness and an attempt, and um, I think also knowing the demographics of your community too. Uh -huh. um, yeah. It's well, just more of an even distribution 
-hmm. across the calendar year rather than making sure all the sporting events don't fall on one religious holiday versus or one religious tradition versus another. Yeah. That would really be the, the best case scenario is that everybody has one sporting event that <laughs> <laughs> they can go home and celebrate with a traditional festive meal. A traditional festive meal? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be helpful, um, and this is going farther than we're contemplating, but to invite in um, either families or probably families would be best. Invite in parents of non-Christian faiths and ask them, like, which, which days of the year are really non-negotiable? Because we don't, you know, as, um, I don't know. I know there are differences in the, the seriousness of, you know, different holidays, and you're going to, it's going to be a big problem to schedule an event on this holiday, but not necessarily that holiday. And if we just asked. So again, I ask how. So how do I ask people when I'm not identifying their religion for them? Could you mm -hmm. use a Google form asking? I could. Uh, could you put it families? in the principal's newsletter? Hey, if you want to help us learn about what's important, contact okay. us. Okay. Yeah. I think also Jim's point about an awareness, the bottom line for me would be I wouldn't want you penalized. So right. if you took off today because of some holiday that was important to your religion, I don't want the teacher to oh, be giving yeah, yeah. you a gaff or you to lose something because of it. You know, that's sort of, to mm -hmm. me, the bottom line. You know, I wonder, do we have this data already? If we went back and we, looked at, and we looked at attendance records, and we found that there were certain weeks throughout the year that we were having high absent rates because there was a tradition that was being celebrated that you know, it didn't fit with the school calendar. I don't know if our end size is big enough. You might not be able to do it just from that because some students yeah. might come and feel very conflicted. You know, families right. might feel conflicted right. where so they want their kids families. to do well on, they have an exam that day and they want them to do well on that exam, but you know, mm -hmm. they're not they come practicing after, on that. Yeah. We have ideas of how to work through this. Um, it's just in terms of a policies perspective, this particular organization asked if the policy committee would consider adding religion to the equity, diversity, and inclusion policy. I, I thought it was already on there, so it's, it's just, not, yeah, it's I, not, I, th I think it's looked. certainly oh, worth it. I think you can put that in the oversight category. Yeah. Thank you for that discussion. I move that we accept the monitoring report. A second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. So, um, along to the next round of jewel. Yes. Yeah, I can give a brief um, yep. overview, and you can fill in. So. Um, our Pietro Lynn, our uh, the attorney who does work for the district, uh, contacted us. He's apparently been in touch with some other attorneys, and there is a class action lawsuit that is being put together against a company, Jewel, for basically practices that target um, youths for their products. Um, and as you're probably all aware, the more we know about vaping and uh, kind of smokeless tobacco and you know etc uh, the more we're realizing that the health risks are huge the addiction risks are huge um, and there does appear to be a very deliberate attempt to mark these products to kids um, and get them hooked. so um, there's I see several upsides to this for a few downsides uh, it would be uh, a litigation focused on holding the company accountable for their practices targeting kids, um, with the possibility of a large settlement uh, that I think would both be punitive for the company, um, hopefully result in, in changes in their practices, um, if not, you know, changes in their, their business model. Um, and it has the potential to bring uh, not insubstantial funds into the district uh, as part of a, a settlement award. Um, and I think, uh, you know, as long as we continue to check, and it's it's very legit, and it seems to be very legit. Um, Can you put it to us? 
work. Yeah, P paper would not send it to us if it worked. Um, I don't see any any real negative downsides. I think the community would be supportive, um, and um, yeah, I'm certainly supportive. So, would it would it do more than just target? Would this lawsuit potentially set, establish precedent for other uh, vape makers um, as well? I know Jewel is like the big game in town, but um, okay. it could, yeah. I mean, it could certainly send a signal that that uh, you know that if you target kids, the school districts will come after you, and it's it's not okay. And is this has this lawsuit already been filed, and there there's just more parties that are joining, or how? I got the impression from the email that it was in the works. Um, I don't know if it's been filed yet or not. So we wouldn't have any attorney fee liability? It's a contingency. It's a, it's a contingency case. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that word. Is it going to be filed in Vermont, or is it a national I, th I don't think it's being filed in Vermont. So there was an if article we win, Pietro gets paid, but do we? Well, that was going to be my name. Is Pietro counsel in the case, or is he just <laughs> he was referring contacted. us? He was contacted. I think um, he sent us an article, and it's been a few days since I read it, from the Los Angeles Times about this. So I, I think it's it may be originated in California. Um, so what would he I said like other districts in Vermont are interested. Um, there are four already who have signed on. Four who have signed on? Mm -hmm. Do you know who they are? Yes. Should I say that now? Um, let me bring it up. Oh, have you been told not to say it? Nope. Okay, then go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> must be public knowledge. Uh, will be. Um, well, if I haven't filed a suit, it might not be public knowledge. Uh, uh, Maple Run, which is St. Albans, yeah. Essex Westford, Addison Northwest, Colchester, and others will join. Yeah. I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, Do we have to... Well. In principle, I'm all for it. I, I don't know what type of liability would be exposed to um, and expenses we could be exposed to. Be exposed to. I mean, the only possible one is if, if it was, I, I mean, I can't imagine it's such a baseless case that they'd be able to go after us for fees. Um, Right, that, that's a pretty high standard. Um, there could standard. be discovery. There could be some, yeah. you know, so you could end up with having to turn over documents and sort that's of for what records. I was wondering and if your administrators get deposed could happen yeah. in any lawsuit. Do we have any basis? Uh, do we have any basis beyond the obvious to <coughs> claim that our kids are harmed? I mean. Uh, we know there's, there's yeah. use, right? Yeah, are you yeah. asking whether or not our kids are using Oh, these no, products? I know that the kids <laughs> are using the products. Yeah. That is not a question. Yeah. But I just don't know. You know, Bridget was saying that if they, if they um, charge us for discovery, they're looking for documents. Do we have, I guess we have documentation of when we've caught kids. But yeah. we would have documentation of, documentation of when we've caught kids. We'd also have documentation of going back to what Becky talked about yesterday or a little while ago uh, about the youth behavior survey. Mm -hmm. that they report out self reporting data. Mm -hmm. could, could it potentially have health records of students? No. Mm -hmm. is, are you Jim, is there a point at which, if we're going to discuss, discuss possible evidence that the district might have, that we would do this in? Executive, executive session. session, whether we do or do not have evidence that might support it. I don't know whether it makes sense to have that be on the public record if we're considering litigation. If we're, you know, the decision to have to, to engage in litigation is not something that we would necessarily put into a closed session, but if there's something that would disadvantage or advantage, you know, in a case, I just don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not even sure what our litigation approval process is, whether who. Yeah, yeah I, mean, can be, I mean, we've done some amicus briefs and the board has approved <coughs> but we haven't, participating. We but haven't been plaintiff in a suit. No, we haven't. Which is why I thought it would be good to discuss it with the board, because I'm not. Yeah. And it feels like a decision the board should make. To yeah, me. that's, that's It feels my, like a decision the board should make. Yeah. Why would it be it's the school too. district suing them? Why wouldn't it be the parents? Well, I mean. Because the school district incurs costs. 
Yeah, the theory would be that the school districts are incurring some particularized harm yeah. in, in dealing with the problem. I see I'm not, I haven't read about the claims, but that would be the theory. Did it, does it make sense that you and Jim maybe would see the specific um, you could ask if there's a complaint. complaint? So you, I mean, it's hard to answer when you don't know, or do you have that That's already? timing what's the timing of the need for a decision right suppose um, Pietro got in touch with me last week I emailed Jim and Renee for the high school principal to see what their thoughts were Renee immediately was like I'm all in <laughs> they're targeting our kids um, Jim and I talked about it on Friday I asked Pietro a couple more uh, questions like who's who's joining and did he see any potential downfall and he said <coughs> no he did not, <clears throat> as, as our lawyer, and he told me the other districts that have already signed on. And then um, he sent me just this afternoon a client representation agreement. So uh, he, I don't know, which, he hasn't told me a, like you need a drop dead date. Could we? Could we? I'm just propose. What do people think about a motion to have? Jim, I don't know how the chair and vice chair feel about exploring this, taking a look at this language, and then next meeting we could vote on it? Right, you could tell us if you see any big disadvantages to doing this. Maybe we could have a discussion next meeting in executive session if we feel like yeah. that's called for. Okay. Just give both of you yeah. an opportunity to look it over a little more as the chair and vice chair and lawyer sure. and lawyer. <laughs> we are not the school district's yeah. lawyers. <laughs> no, not the school district's lawyers, but yeah. yeah, that's important to distinguish. Who's, that, mean, who's we, the client, who's the form between us and who? Who's the sign-on as a client representation letter? The district. Lynn and Lynn. The district. And? Lynn and Lynn is the, it's Pietro's law firm. Pietro's and, firm, okay. And then Pietro's, okay. So that, yeah. So yeah. they yeah. are Fraser the council. Fraser PLC and Mailey and Mailey PLLC. So we would have to look and see exactly who they are. I propose that you guys look at it and tell us next time what yeah. you think. So they may have stepped into the Vermont question. schools is what I'm guessing. If this is a national thing, they may be rounding up all the Vermont schools. I think, I think yeah. So we need to at least understand our relationship with them and whatever yeah. might come back yeah. from them. Okay, so let's, let's get it further. But there's, in general, yes. If, yes. Yeah. yeah. Major public health issue facing your kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Figure out what potential liability the district could incur if things go sideways. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just or if um, we just have particularly aggressive defense counsel who want to make us feel pain over doing this. <laughs> um, any, is there any focus? So this is more, this is less me talking and more um, asking the board to look at the enrichment data that we have right now in terms of the money that's been spent. Um, the board has discussed on numerous occasions how much and what we want to put in our budget in regards to enrichment after school activities. Um, and as uh, Grant and the administrative team and myself are forming this year's budget. Um, I was interested in you looking at the data that we have thus far and having a discussion amongst yourselves around where we want to go with this um, because a decision could significantly impact other things that we're looking at in the budget process. <laughs> so there's no real learning here other than here's the data discuss what we want to do in, in terms of um, future, future budget. And maybe you would explain to the finance team that we had spent more this year on the after school program than we had anticipated. Than we had anticipated. Yes, we did spend, we have, we are spending more on after school enrichment than anticipated for several reasons. Um, so the, the budget that you see here in fiscal year 20, canoes, life jackets, um, paddles, kayaks, and trailers um, were repossessed. 
by people, um, and we had to buy new ones. <laughs> so for our, gym, for our PE classes to use. Um, so that was an unanticipated equipment fee, which we um, used fund balance money for. Um, the uh, bridges program at Roxbury was more than anticipated in the budget. It was brought to our attention after the budget process, after the budget had been voted on last year in the spring. So that was more. Um, and currently, it's the, the parent contribution hasn't come in quite at the exact rate that we thought it would come in at this point in the year. Um, that could change over time as Drew is starting a new program, and technically, and he's, he's learning his ways around what he can and cannot do after school. So. So what, what are your questions to us? So the question is, the board is, the board has discussed putting more money in our enrichment budget. Do we pay for it all? Do we not pay for it all? Why do we pay for some enrichment activities and not other enrichment activities? Um, and so right now, we will budget for basically, again, how this year has gone should the board not give us other guidance. But if the board wants more money put in that, then you need to tell us now because we're gonna have to cut somewhere else. Why would we put, the way you said it, it, it sounds like we're putting more money in some enrichment activities and less money in others, is that true? No, it's just differently spent. So we budget for sports. And we don't charge kids for sports. But we charge well, kids for mountain biking. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah, it's so just it's differently different, spent. Yeah. But all the things that fall under enrichment are sort of funded in the same manner. You don't yes. you don't fund more for canoes than you do for cars. Oh no 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 no. Yeah, yeah no okay. that's funded in the same manner. Yeah. It's kind of the bucket of what do we call enrichment and what yes. do we call Extra curricular school and sports. Yeah. Well are, is there anything else is there anything else? In that category, you got sports, sports. and then all these things. Do there's all these music, there's clubs, clubs. 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 clubs, yeah. You know, there are some things that we offer from the from a, from the co-curricular perspective that um, that are also yeah. covered in the way sports is. Yes, isn't the play? I mean, isn't the drama we have sports program? teams that fundraise though quite a bit. When sports teams fundraise, they're fundraising for. Um, extra, like extra fancy jackets. Yeah, fancy jackets or things with their name across the back of them. Or you know, they're they're funding for things that are not going to be school district property after the season is over that the kids are going to take home themselves. And busing for for transportation. That's for included in the co-curriculars. I had a. Uh, I'm sure that Libby could tell the same stories, but I had a interesting experience with Drew in the last month. I went on an overnight uh, camping trip with the kids who were learning uh, <clears throat> kind of like the outdoor wilderness skills. And we went over to Grot and it was a wonderful, wonderful time. I had a, a fifth grader and a seventh grader in that after school program. And, and Drew and I got to sleep in a lean to together and talk and about kind of the, what's going on with the program and kind of challenges. And I got to observe firsthand some of the dynamics and First of all, Drew's incredible, number one, um, and his ideas are huge. Mm -hmm. And I know that what's out there, there is a ton of potential. Uh, I kind of feel like Drew sees it all as his own, kind of he's the, you know, he does it. And it would be nice if it was a team, it was there were more humans to do, to execute the plan because there's only so much that can be done with the with the resources. I'm sure it's true without, throughout the school district. And, but, one of the real challenges I could see, and then it and then it played out immediately afterwards, was that you know, fifth through eighth is a big range in middle school, and it's it's really tough to design a, a, a single after school activity that would serve all those kids. And, and he was trying to do that, but what he saw was that it's hard to keep kids, um, you know, like for instance, like an, if you had an outing kind of club or something, and you tried to run that, it would you really need to dramatically change what you're offering from the younger to the older in order to keep the older interested. And so then, you know, then we had the signups for the next section and my oldest was like, I'm not doing that again. And I'm like, why? Because I was the oldest kid and it wasn't, you know, and I knew all that stuff already, right? And 
it was too bad because it was such it's such a great program but I get it and um, I just see that there's so much potential and so I would definitely advocate for the resources to to let that vision kind of bloom a little bit more anyway before we kind of box it in with resources and um, you know, so it's a big responsibility for, for, to put on one person's shoulders. I mean, I know he has the support of the administration, but it is a it is a tough job for, you know. On the other hand, this is sort of a new program that's just started and hasn't even played out. Mm -hmm. And my it first reaction, right, my first reaction would be to play it out another year in the budget as it has been this year and then tend to... Mm -hmm. You know, even what would he think he needed, and he'd have a better idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he Drew is fantastic. I want to make sure that we say yeah. that on public record. Um, and if I keep pushing him to get his license, so we yeah, can use him even more powerfully. That would be fantastic, <laughs> exactly. Um, and pay him more. Um, and uh, and one of the like he, he, you know, it's a new it is a new season, right? So so he was saying I was just talking to him the other day. He's like, look, fall like fall sports teams are big. They're, they're larger teams, right? And so he's like, that takes a lot of kids who might be interested in the things I can offer. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get as many people who I thought I'd get for the fall. Winter teams are smaller, you know, and there, there might be less of them. So I'm, I'm counting on more kids signing up for skiing and, you know, like all the, the bigger programs that he typically runs. So he, he's in playing with numbers still and, and learning what to expect from just seasons and sports alone. So I think he'll have a better idea after another year <clears throat> of what he needs. Mm -hmm. One of the things I know that he's experienced or we've experienced as parents is um, scrambling to find advisors basically for the different projects. So it's not just him mm -hmm. running from one to the next to the next doing it himself only. And, or at least getting a co-person to help him with some of those things. And I don't know how successful that is. I don't know how well that's going, but I think it's limiting or directing kind of what he can offer and what he can. Yeah, and that's been a new experience for us financially too. Like how do you, is it a contractor contract that we offer? Is it a co-curricular? Then they become our employees, but they're not really our employee. You know, like it gets yeah. tricky very, and then his insurance, it, it gets really, just the business logistics and bureaucratic structure of how we have to run our finances. Sure. We have to, we're learning that still. Um, we're making it work right now, but I know that he's feeling a lot like he has to do it all because it's the easiest way to do it because he's already our employee. You know? <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, we've had to learn how to do that. So on the finance side, um, the estimated compared to the budgeted amount, that difference, have we addressed that previously, how we're going to cover that? Well, we exactly. don't have to buy canoes or kayaks now. We've got yeah. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. For, no, for it's, it's the current fiscal yeah. year. If you only no, have a certain amount budgeted. Say it again. I'm sorry. So there's um, about a $40,000 difference between what was budgeted and what you're estimating is going to be needed for the program mm -hmm. for the year. Have we had a discussion yet about how that's going to be covered? I mean, it was mentioned in the first quarter report. It's one of the things that we're over on. Mm -hmm. But have and these costs are addressed in the fund balance. Are you asking how we cover this year or what about next year? I'm talking about right now fiscal normally year 20. Normally we get a proposal to move things from right. fund balance, yeah. and we haven't seen that. Yeah, right. that's, what, so that's, what, yeah, what, I'm, that's what I'm getting that, at. Grant is on that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what the plan is. I think he's waiting to see what happens, okay. right? So just the, the, <clears throat> the fall thing I was just talking about. Yeah. You know, like we could get way more kids in the winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taking part so of our more enrich program fees, which right. means but more parents like involvement. Already in, baked in here, at least in the twenty-one budget. Oh no, it's in here as well. You have your actuals there, and we don't yeah. know what the estimate is for it's full very, year, right? Right. So yeah. we haven't gone through a full year yet. Yeah. So it's hard to know what to ask for yet. Yeah, that's okay. what. Mm -hmm. That's what I guess I'm getting at. Okay. My, my question to you is, how, and, and I think you just answered it, but I just want to make sure we're all clear. Um, how do you plan to cover that difference if it ends up being the estimated amount? What is going to be the proposal? Is it going to be use fund balance? Is it going to for be this, shift from elsewhere? For this elsewhere fiscal in the, year. 
we will ask to use fund balance. Okay. I wasn't certain if there was another but area some, of the budget. Sometimes the budget. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Number, but it's a yeah. little early because yeah. it's only yeah. the first quarter, so yeah. it's hard to know where that will land. Okay. Yeah, but should that not happen, should okay. he not be able to figure it out in other ways, we'd ask for a kind of fund balance. Okay. The okay. jewel settlement. <laughs> yeah, the jewel settlement. <laughs> Drew would be psyched. <laughs> Is it, is it, yeah. Well, that's kind of how we got the scoreboard in the middle school, right? It was like Coke's apology for giving the kids so much sugar. I, I think. didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. I'm comfortable continuing the current level of funding given the yeah, newness of the program. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't sound like we have a specific proposal for we need X to do something else. And so. honestly, it sounds like because we really don't know yet. We haven't played let out a year. Let us play out a year. It'll let us play down. Is that kind of what I you're mean, recommending? Is that keep it the way it is? I mean, because otherwise you might come in here and go, you know what? We're seeing this that really this isn't going to work unless we add X or you know, but you're not really saying that, are you? No, I'm not saying it's not not yeah. going to work. I think we're servicing a very similar amount of kids as we have in the past through this programming. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just now we're dealing with the finance, like it's just financial and bureaucratic things that we have to figure out yeah. and let it play. I would, I would recommend to the board that we, we budget this year based on what we are thinking this year's cost, or budget next year, sorry, based on what we thought about already and bumping it a little for the bridges piece because we know they're gonna come out and ask us for more about that. Um, and then, Let's figure out how, to, like, what we really want for the next year. And and we did discuss this during finance committee. I mean, the the issue of bridges be it is something that deserves evaluation because that's about twenty percent of the resources which for after school, which is going to this bridges program. And the question is, could we, you know, use our might be might might we be able to provide more for the same amount of money or um, provide the same amount for a little bit less. Bridges is part of the 21st century grant, mm -hmm. and so we have to decide whether we stick with that grant or it would be cheaper to do it on our own. We're paying, that money goes to, what is it? Central Finance. Yeah. One thing that might be interesting to, to, to in this question I don't think is answered in here, is to look at the ages of the kids or the grades of the kids who are taking advantage of the program. Um, am I missing it or is it not here? Did I ask that question? <coughs> you break it out by high school and middle school, but I'm I'm sorry, I, and I I think mean, even more fine sort on it. I think we might see some real trends in that. Um, you know, I think that uh, the intersection the intersection of the enrichment and the the child care kind of family need versus enhance enrichment. And um, I think you can see it pretty clearly in the middle school that it, it moves pretty quickly from young to old in terms of the oh, yeah. family does much less need for child care. Or perhaps the kids are more resistant to child care as they get older. Either way, it's, it drops off fast, and yet we really want to be doing enrichment for those kids who maybe don't even, they aren't attracted to it naturally, but um, it may be also the types of program we're offering aren't attracting those kids. And so if there's no family need, maybe we don't need to spend the money unless we see it as a value to do enrichment. So I just think maybe if we knew ages, it would help us sort that out a little more. And we'll know better, as she was saying, difference between fall sports, winter sports, once we have yeah. a year of data. Mm -hmm. And Drew, I think, has been putting some effort into learning what he can offer the high school in particular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll see that kind of down in the uh, MHS. How can he be in two <coughs> places at once? He's a busy man. <laughs> and we were, yeah, yeah. we were previously spending, what, like between 40 and 50? Oh, and more than that. Yeah. For, uh, yeah well, for we, we were community connections giving community district. connections last, last year it was budgeted, like 37,000 okay. was budgeted for community connections and parents were paying on top of that. Mm -hmm. And this year, 
we're looking at 93,000 for the same services and parents. And that, you're including no, bridges that now, so bridges. Oh, yeah, yeah, take, take bridges out. So it's 78,000. And the equipment you have to take out. That was oh, yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So 60,000. But are we getting better value for that money from your perspective? I think that's yet to be determined. Okay. Because it is, you know, 20, 23, 24, 000. it's almost, you know, it's like a 40% increase in what we're spending for the same end, end result. And the question is, is the result better? You know, are more kids participating? And we don't know the answer mm -hmm. to that. Are, well, you we know, need more. each <laughs> we are off. We are providing a higher quality job for Drew than he had, yes. I believe. That, which is, is also a, a, was also a goal of the change. It's also kind of a false comparison since the other program, I mean, at least when you think about things like the insurance, the vans, the insurance like that, those things weren't really going to be able to be continued the way they were anyway. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful not to, you know, there's some, there's, there would have been some escalation in cost. Mm -hmm. We tried to keep it outside the building, outside this district anyway. The other thing, Steve, to that end as well, the other thing that is not contributing to that, which is an enormous factor, was that basically the fees that UES parents were paying community connections for the after school mm -hmm. care were paying for the middle school programming. So we gave $36,000 to community connections. However, the reason why they were able to do enrichment programming was because UES was a very large money maker for them. And so, you know, it was, it was almost like an add on because UES was such a big money maker. So now, too soon. now UES is served by part, part two. two. As well as MSMS. There's seven to 15 kids in that too. Are parents paying less? It depends on their socioeconomic status. I think so, it's just too soon. So part two is also at the middle school. So we have, yes. in addition to this program at the middle school, we also have a child care program at the middle yes. school. Yes. That only serves younger kids. That only serves younger kids and doesn't cost us anything. Doesn't cost the district anything. Okay, so we do have a, and we have somewhat expanded our after school options. Oh, we have definitely expanded our after that's school I, options. That's what I was asking. I'm sorry, yeah. I wasn't yeah. including part two in that. We have most definitely yeah. expanded our after school options. But I mean, it's only November 6th. I, mean, I, I don't know how we can possibly assess what, is, yeah. what we're doing with that. It's just too soon. But it does seem well, like. Well, we can do an extent if we're offering like double the programs that we were before and we have double the students enrolled this time of year. That's all that I'm saying is, I think it's worth assessing what, we're three months into the school year? It's worth at least saying yeah, how we're we doing. Yeah, Especially if we're being asked to say, do we want to continue to do it? Well, it's now or never because we're building a yeah. budget. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah we only have three months. We do a minor early. assessment and then we move on. We just say, you know what, we don't have enough data. Let's keep yeah. going. And then yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm saying, let's keep going with what we've got it. and then see how the year plays out. I would say though from the reckoning we just did that it's looking decent. I mean we are we our net expenditure is greater but we have added programming and we have when we're providing better quality employment. So Yeah, and that's the general story that I'm I'm trying to dredge out of this cuz we're looking at, you know, if, if I'm a taxpayer who's watching this closely, I'm like, okay, you guys were spending $37,000 before, and now it's 93000 We can explain the bridges um, component and the equipment, that was in and there, equipment, and the equipment, which, which, which comes out of there. But then, you know, there, there is enhanced, um, if, if we're offering more programming, that's, you know, that's part of it. I'm just looking at what's going on on the municipal side, and I think that there's a very distinct chance that there's gonna be some budgetary pressures this year on us that we haven't had in the past couple of years because of major health insurance overages and I think municipal tax rates. And infrastructure. Are, at least they don't have to manage special education. We <laughs> <laughs> started Steve. <laughs> you know, I think the other that part of the analysis would be to look at, at uh, how the part two piece is going and how parents are doing with that and all that, but I think it may, we can, Call it. We can wait on that because it doesn't have direct budgetary impact, but it, it will be part of our overall assessment of whether the decisions we've been making are going in the right direction. That's a good end of the year. Yeah. I actually just spoke to them today about some of their numbers and things like that. Great. Maybe they at, at what some point, point do we have to? But at, well, at what point do we have to renew the contract or not? 
I assume that you do that, but isn't there a... They are going to do summer programming, and I mean, it's kind of a year-round continuation. So unless we see significant reason to not use them... So there's not continue. an actual contract that's going to, that has an end date? That no. It has to be renewed? They will be doing okay. after summer programming starting up right after school. Well, we have a contract with them, right? There, there must be some provision contract. in the contract yeah. about renewal or termination or something. I'd have to check. So that, because that just might be a timing point. Yes, yeah. I'd have to check. With, with ample time, I mean, we should probably be looking at, you know, just to do that kind of due diligence. Hey, we've made huge changes, and now let's go back and reflect, and how, how are we feeling about these changes, and you know, how, is, how is the community feeling about these changes? And it'd be great to have them come in or whoever, um, not yet, but at some point, like, you know, January or something maybe, or March. Yeah, no, that's a different topic. That, that's but. a different topic, exactly. Did you need something? Yeah, did you need no, something? Guess, no. Well, so did what I'm understanding say? from the discussion is that we're gonna we're gonna budget similarly, similarly. similarly. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> similarly to how we budget this year, mm -hmm. using perhaps more of our actuals once. Um, using perhaps more of our actuals. Yeah, the board is okay with that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Great, perfect. So now we are on to board discussion. <coughs> um, <coughs> district enrollment, uh, MHS class sizes, um, and motion to and with the action of being able to approve the one FTE hire for the school year for the middle school. Um, so I'll open it up for discussion. Um, let's see if everyone scrolled through the data, which I have, a, I have a general question. Other than wanting to take dystopian fiction, I don't have. So, <laughs> so we, 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 I think Irish. Well, I know you could just watch this, but, uh, <laughs> We're talking about what high school classes we want. So, <laughs> so we we have this. We what what you can see in the red and yellow table here, and we were talking with Grant about this before, is you can see a bubble moving up in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. class size, and it's, it's, there's a distinct possibility that, you know, it, thing, our, our average class size will go back into our sweet spot, you know, two, three years from now in MSMS. So how, what, what are you thinking about, Libby, in terms of a plan for addressing yeah. this hump? I'm glad you asked that question, Andrew. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, um, in discussing this at length with Pam, well, and, and Jim knows this as well, as we're projecting out three years of what um, our needs are academically and social emotionally, um, hiring an F one FTE now to address the bubble of kids that will be there for the next two years, because after this year, right? So it's a sixth grade class now that is large, and then in seven, eight, mm -hmm. right, will continue to be large. Once that bubble moves through, moving that FTE into an intervention position, um, which, is, which is needed at the middle school as well, and will continue to be needed. Um, so that's the idea, is that it wouldn't always be in a classroom teacher piece. It would move into a, supports, a support, a teacher support, not an IA, but a support for either SEL or um, academic enrichment or intervention. And are you thinking it'll be the same person or are you thinking that there's going to be attrition? Every year there's a certain amount of attrition and with one of those teaching positions you'll repurpose that. That is really hard to answer because it depends on licensure. Right. Middle school licensure is a beast. Mm -hmm. So you could be hired under a K-6 license. So you could teach up to sixth grade or all six content grade. areas. Or there's a middle level endorsement, not oh. 612 a middle level endorsement, which is a content specific, so you could only teach seventh grade math, math for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so it really depends who the hire is um, and what their licensure availability is. So do you think you might hire under a one year contract for next year and a one year contract for the next year because an interventionist might have, you want to have other skills? If, if I'm a- It wouldn't continue to be well, if you're hiring any new teacher, it's a provisional for two years. So technically, I mean, when you really get down to it, you're hiring for, a, it's a provisional. 
right? So as it's long as provisional, but I'm trying to be honest up to the teacher I'm hiring to. So mm -hmm. I might say, okay, this is a sixth grade position. You might be certified to teach sixth grade, right? Mm -hmm. This year. But then you're not certified, perhaps, yeah. to teach seventh. Many middle level educators have dual licensure, um, so we have to. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's fine. It's a tricky beast, right? Yeah. So we're we want to hire the best person for the job, <laughs> and you know, the license. Plenty of our educators have multiple licenses, um, so it, it, it's an FTE. I don't want to think of it as a person. I want to think of it as an FTE. And where do we need that FTE at the middle school? Currently, we need it at that bubble of kids, which is a classroom teacher. Didn't, didn't we, did we not approve this yet? No. Did no, we just discussed the same thing we talked about before. So has somebody actually registered for this, for into sixth grade? Last, the last board meeting, you said a family was coming in to bump it up and they hadn't registered yet. Did they actually register? As, I don't know. I didn't say. But it sounds like we're on this collision course regardless. We are on the collision course regardless. As I said we, last meeting, I think we had 34, 35 new students enroll at the middle school this summer. We're on this collision course, but uh, the when we need to hire them does not necessarily come about unless there's somebody here to. I guess the question is whether we want to have that volatility at all times or whether we want to have be positioned. Yeah. Steve? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the issue. Remember, we entered this fiscal year irresponsibly close to the line. That's one way to look at it, right? Is that, and therefore, we put ourselves in a position where mid-year we're doing a higher. Is that right? Yes. I mean, I'm not saying we were irresponsible. I'm saying that you could argue that we were. We were so close. We talked about that at the last meeting, that, you know, like, maybe we shouldn't have done that. I don't but think we, we were irresponsible. We I know were you over don't. the limit. We were in the yellow. But see, the yellow. thing is, yellow. the difference between the being over a limit, which compels you to action, versus looking at your ideal is a really important distinction. And I think that what we try to do is be closer to the optimal. And then if we get close to that line, we know we're playing with fire. And in this case, we got burned. And so I'm, I'm not thinking, we, in retrospect, we might do the exact same thing. But the point is that there's a good reason to step back from the edge. And whether or not you know we cross the over or not. And so if we step back from the edge, we don't have to we don't have to be so reactive. My question, though, was yeah. you, you had said, Libby, that we need an interventionist. Are we prepared to wait until the 22, 23 year to get that interventionist? I mean, is it, I mean, if you know now that you would ideally have one and we're going to see the bubble start to relax at that point, is then the time to, to hire the extra FTE for that? Or do you feel like, well, there's still partial bubble there? or? Um, I'm just wondering how you, I get, I, to me it's an easy one to say, look, we're gonna use the FTE for through 21, 22, then that position may evaporate because we won't need it, that's, that's fine. It's, you know, it's hard personnel decisions, but it's the way it goes. But then what, do you, what about this, this interventionist and putting it off for that long? My best answer for that, Steve, which is a very good question, is um, the administrative team has prioritized needs and right now the intervention position at MSMS, while has been a stated need, has not reached the priority level of other areas. Yeah. Um, so there are large priorities that we can only ask for so much in a, budget, in a budgetary year, and we have prioritized other things. Yeah, that so, so that by no means sort of the, uh, the hard plan is that that position will become an interventionist. It just sounds like it could be because you may need it earlier, you may decide at that point that that's still not the need. As we think three years out, which um, we are thinking right now, as what are, what's, yeah. what are we prioritize, sorry, prioritizing next year versus yeah. the year after versus the year after, um, as of what we know right now from our system and our needs at this moment in time, which could very well change, um, that that is what our plan is. Yeah. You, you had said before there was something about getting the system in order also mm -hmm. before you needed those mm -hmm. people. So mm -hmm. I assume you're still yeah. working on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is and is the maximum of twenty five? I'm seeing the way the way it was presented here. It looks like it's greater than eighteen or less than twenty five. Doesn't look like it's less than or equal twenty five. But I, I might just be looking at that too literally. It's less than twenty five. So if we're at twenty five, are we indeed at twenty five right now? Because we have yellow as twenty five close to the max. As soon as. If we get one more student in the sixth grade, we'll be okay. at 25. Okay. We're at 99. So the, the red boxes are where we're at 25, and the yellow boxes are where we're at 24. Well, well it says 25, and it's in yellow. Yeah, you know, that's 
growing it, huh? Where are you? 19 to 20. Current year. 16 may have included. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm You're saying, right. are we actually already at max? And that? My understanding is at currently, without this particular student registered, this poor student um, registered, that we have 99 students in four sixth grade classrooms. So we have. We're right there. We're right there. Yeah, and, and there's this yeah. question of, you know, what's the goal? So we so, have 25 in three classrooms yeah. and 24 in one classroom, sure. which. So you could take one more student and be at your max. Well, no, 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 no I would no, say. Sorry, I'm, I'm wrong. That one student will push us over the max. Sorry, I was doing my it's math wrong. Less, well, it's less than 25. Less than 25 right? well, Thank I'll, God we don't have to get into this level because it wouldn't be our job, really. really. <laughs> yes. no. but, it's, well, it's also an average, so it's not yes. that each classroom has to meet that. It's somewhere the average. Above, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere above. Which is why you have to find my numbers. So I'm curious to ask if there was any consideration since it's. Um, a student that maybe hasn't even registered yet, whether it was a consideration of hiring a half-time person who would be there for reading and math, let's say, and because it's only one student over the limit. I think there's a question though. I mean, what's, what's our goal? Is our goal to kind of stay in the optimal green zone or is it to stay absolutely positively as close to the red line as we Our can. goal is to be well, close to Steve. optimal. The word yes. optimal indicates yes. that's where you want to be. <laughs> I want to correct myself earlier. I found my notes from, we are at 100 right now. We are not at 99. We are at 100. So, so yeah, so we are at, at max. We right are now. at 20. That's, that's, that's right. that the administration that's hire one FTE that. for the remainder of the school year for Main Street Middle School. That's great. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> that was even quicker. All those in favor? Oh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> 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 Can I ask another question about the enrollment, which is unrelated to the middle school? Um, so this, this shows that the high school has 60 more kids in it this year than it had last year. How's that going? <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, that's, that's a lot more kids in the building, is that? It's like two thirds of grade. It's a 20% increase in the building. A lot of kids enrolled this summer. <laughs> My kids impressed there. by the, the difference. In, yeah. Really? Yeah. In the the feel of the school. Did they, did they like it better? She's just like, there's so many kids. Yeah, that's yeah. a big increase. It's, no, it's, are there it's any good. issues like with things like increase. like lockers or sports teams or Our capacity? You know, capacity for, I don't know. Other than I can answer yeah. the question. I don't know. We did we did figure it out a few years ago that the high school capacity is 500. So yeah. like the like we're cafeteria still under it. and the auditorium, I think maybe holds 600, which mm -hmm. gives you 500 students and the associated adults, Yeah, if I remember correctly. So I'm curious to know, given that. Although we've changed the number of seats in the auditorium, so. Just a little bit. Just a no, little. no, I think we took it. It ended up being like one or two rows. It had, it's not a considerable amount. So it's definitely more kids, but it seems like it. The it's building like can fit. It. Maybe not at lunch. I don't. I've heard lunch. I've heard they can all. Well, they don't all go to lunch at the same time. time so. lunch. But there are only two lunch periods, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. They seem to fit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen anybody standing while eating. <laughs> they also eat all over the school. That's what yeah. I mean. I've you know, they're not they all there. Like they go there. outside. Yeah. They go outside. Some eat under the stairs. So you know. Like, <laughs> It sounds awful. You know what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the <laughs> Dropping their food everywhere. <laughs> so I'm curious to ask, given all those numbers, so for example, in Algebra 2, first semester, you have four classes. Yes. One with eight, one with five, one with six, one with eight. At the very least, why weren't the first two combined to be 13 and the next two combined to be 14? So it's a scheduling issue. It's um, with a small school and the limited amount of people teaching each class and the amount of classes that are offered to kids. Kids put in their preferences in, this, in April for their, which they want, what they want to take. And then Power School has an algorithm to try to get rid of conflicts. And because Power School does most of that for us, right? To try to get rid of conflicts. Now this is an area that I was talking to Renee just today about. And she's like, I want to dig into this more to understand why things are happening. Um, however, things like chorus and band and those kind of things are only offered at very certain times because they're shared between schools. 
And so it gets to the point where things have to be offered at the same time. And so kids can't all go into, the, if they have to take algebra, they can't go into it because one class because they're taking chorus as well. I, it's a choice when you get smaller. You, uh, to be economical, you don't have as many choices. Can I just interject, though, that I had this understanding, at least from geometry, that there are math classes where honors and regular class are the same class. And I yes. wouldn't rule out the possibility that, that, that this algebra class and the algebra 2 honors class could be the same class, because geometry runs that way. It could very well the, be that way. This it's the course. same class, same teacher. Some kids are doing the honors version, and some kids are not. And very geometry well, it looks be the same because way because of how PowerSchool prints it out. This mm -hmm. is a printout from PowerSchool, so this you yes, you yes. Very well this is the way math works. Correct. That's the way math works. So that some kids that are would be helpful to know though, because not. when the community looks at this and says, "You have four classes," and yeah. The biggest one has eight, and the lowest one has five. I think they might be sitting in the same class they, with they the are. other Algebra two class. They are, for sure, guaranteed. Okay, yeah, because that, well, that's how geometry would be nice works. to know. That. <laughs> yes, is what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> I move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> it's not debatable. Is there only ten of eight? Do you have anything else you want to talk about in terms of? Class size. We should dispense with my motion first. Uh, I no one second. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm trying to, second. Is, trying to be polite. I'm trying to make sure that, that I can get a second. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's too bad to cut off conversation about small classes at the high school when we spent a lot of years talking about those small classes. It's not my hire. Yeah. Pardon me? It What's is on, on the agenda. But it was on the agenda. It is on the agenda. Small classes in the high school? MHS class MHS size is on the agenda. Size is yeah, on the agenda. agenda. It, it just doesn't have a small in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think that's why it's on the agenda. I think it's on the agenda because we're concerned about the size of some. We're concerned about the largeness <laughs> rather than the smallness. I mean, it seems like the. I don't uh, know. Why was it on the agenda? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess my thought on, on small, I mean, you know, the high school's growing. We've got a bubble coming through. Right. Um, I, I think the time to have a discussion about, you know, the small classes and consolidating is, is when we're trying to go the other way. But it is on the agenda, so I was just trying to, yeah. why is yeah, it on the agenda? Yeah. It's not, 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 I'm not concerned asked, that there's yeah, small Someone groups. wanted a review of what the class sizes were. And, oh, okay. And, um, that's, that's, Got it. Okay. And I think it's good to know coming in. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, it seems like the information we get is more representative of how it's represented in Power School World than yeah. what who's actually sitting in various yes. classes. Yes, yes, and the well, this gets into administrative minutia, but um, the board should keep in mind that our data manager, who did run Power School, is no longer with us. Um, we had challenges at his leaving. We have a brand new person running Power School now. Um, the guys team relied on the old person or the person who was previously in that position to run the scheduling. Um, and this is and we have a new principal who is very much looking into some of these questions that you're asking. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. But I mean, you know, the average okay. class size is twenty one point seven. So mm -hmm. that's which is which is kind of a kind of a sweet big, spot. Yeah. Seems yeah. yeah. Sounds Sounds like. Like. Yeah. Super. Yeah, I, I talked to some educators. My sense is the classes are large. About what they prefer. They, they were saying like 18 Remember to 22 that? is a sweet spot. High school teachers. <clears throat> I'm sure someone's like, I, I don't totally depends on the class though. That you're teaching. My sense is that the classes are big. I presented so, to a class last I week that was only like we're doing great. Yeah. That's because it's an elective. Oh, is yeah. that why? Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, do we have a second from Mr. Lynch's motion? There was. Motion? I seconded it a while back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you.